Do you want to say hello? Because you've not said hello for a while. What? What are you looking at me like that for? No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Back by popular demand. And I mean by popular demand. And uh, he's back. He's here. He's uh, smiling. And he's, as usual, he's looking at me quite funny. Colin is here. This. Uh, hello. Yes. This is We're Not Wizards. <laughs> and we are going to be talking about some board games. Is it? Yes. I thought we talked about cars. No. Oh. No, that's yeah. We're Not Mechanics. Yes. Yes, which is, our <laughs> other, which is our other show that doesn't exist. And this episode is going to be called The End of the Saga and Playing in Your Wise. Now, we know why it's called that. Yeah, because we sit with no trousers on. Exactly, but you, and yeah. you will know why it's called that. <laughs> <laughs> um, how are you? I'm, I'm all right. Good. I'm all right. I've recovered. You've recovered because it was your... It was my birthday. It was your weekend. birthday. Yes, it's yes. like having to prompt you to say the word <laughs> birthday. Did you have a good time? It was good, yeah. Good fun. Yeah. Good, mm. good. Because obviously the first question people are going to ask is, where have you been? I I haven't been anywhere, Richard. <laughs> I know. It's you that's been running free. With I've your... been running around talking to various <laughs> different people. and uh, Talking always... to strangers. I thought we... I know. I thought we told you not to talk to strangers, but no. Well, you know, if you go out and you just like kind of blindly go out and say, hmm, do you fancy having a chat? And people go, yes, I'll have a chat. Well, yes. You know, it kind of happens. And then it's been building up and, and our schedules just haven't kind it's of... It's been, yeah, really bad. Yeah, um, we've kind of... Just had no time to sit down and no play anything. And play anything and make noises about stuff. And actually, the episode we were meant to be doing was meant to have been recorded... About two months ago. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. And yeah. then other things kind of took, took over. Um, for those who are joining us for the first time, the reason that we do this is because they are quite simply not, not, enough, po- not podcasts, enough podcasts, not enough about board games. And there's certainly not enough podcasts out there that are just two, two guys. Two guys. Like there's us, there's two hardly guys. any podcasts. Two guys. two guys and one that's slightly older now. Because he's been his birthday. Ever, ever so slightly older. Yes. Yes. Have I grown so old? Oh, you, your beard is... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I can't even see the microphone. What is going on with this nonsense? Hey, what's a microphone, Sonny? <laughs> hey, speak up. Do you want some questions answered or what? Um, playing. What we've been playing. What we've been getting to the table. We've got, obviously, our two mainstays that yep. we said we were going to play, but we've been flicking back and forward mm. between a couple of games... And uh, well, last time we met, which was Friday, we was, we played a bit of Pixel Tactics. Yeah, well, I played a bit of Pixel Tactics. Um. You utterly <laughs> kind of knew what you were doing, and I was wondering what was going on. Yeah, it was great until I showed Liam how to play Pixel Tactics, and, and then, then he just gubbed me game after he? game. Did yeah, he? first time I've lost at Pixel Tactics. Oh, well, I beat I, you the I, time before. Well, I. I guess you and I'm going to play a card that's just for lols, and that, that was. And then I was like, "All right, so I did win, and I, I kind of got very, very lucky because my character could do just lots and lots of damage." Oh, he was damage. awesome. Yeah, was he? Yeah, was he really one of these guys? Character. He just got it. Like... And I'm just sitting there with my with my resting rich face. Oh, uh, he was just doing all these amazing combos. He's like, I can't do anything. <laughs> I hate this game. But you've got. Because one of the things you got for your birthday, you got a lot of the expansions for it, didn't I, I, you? I went out and bought all the expansions for it. So you've now got a full yeah. box. I'm looking at the box now, and it looks quite big and imposing on the It's, it's on a the big, couch. solid bit of wood now, yeah. Yes. And in all fairness, I enjoyed it, but mm-hmm. I haven't played it enough. So I You've not you, played it enough? No. No, I don't, I've not understood the meta at all. It's a game where you've got to play it three, four times, and then you're like, oh. This is so good. It synergizes. <laughs> <laughs> I know where to put this front bit on the front back, bit on the, this bit, bit on the right bit. I know where my mm. vanguard is. I can tell my rear line from my um, my attacks and my magic. And the, stuff red like that. the red <laughs> bit. Give me back the first player card now. Uh, we we've covered it in a previous episode. We, we did talk so about if you want to go tactics, back to a previous yeah. episode and listen to what we think about pixel tactics, you can hear me gush. <laughs> oh, it's such a good game, it's so gushy, but it is. It's good fun. Um, the so we played that. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the reasons that I was trapped from playing Dungeon Saga was because I took a journey through time. Time stories. Ooh. Yes. Now, I last time I spoke about time stories, it was me and Gary Butterfield, and mm-hmm. he was about to play it. Yep. And we had done the first round, and that was me and Mister Leo. Yep. He was in there as well. And that was good fun because Mr. Leo was taking lots of notes as an only an iconographer can do. He's he's a typologist, but Is yep. he? Oh, I thought he was doing all right, okay. So right. Well I'm gonna edit that out so I look smart then, <laughs> Captain Clever Faces. Um he I was don't making... even think he's a typologist. He's he's got a really fancy title. He's a fontologist. <laughs> Probably. He's a, he's a font of all knowledge, is there, Mr. Leo. So he's <laughs> taken all the notes and everything was fine. And then the next week we came back. Yeah, which we were going to have our game. Yes. But um, the guy that owns Time Stories was quite insistent that... Yes. That you, you you carry on, but Mr. Leo wasn't there. But you didn't have half your original players. Mr. Leo wasn't there, and also the most important thing, the notebook with all the notes in it, wasn't there. Wasn't there either. Now, I'm getting old, and sometimes I'm the type of guy that goes, yeah. "I lock, you know, hello, hello, I'm 93." I lock the back door, mm-hmm. and then I'll go to the car, and then I'll go, "Did I lock the back door?" And I'll go back to the locked door. And just check it. Not in an OCD oh, type style, just remembering that I've actually locked the back door. So I'm getting asked to remember all these facts and details and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't. <laughs> I was just like, I have no idea where I'm meant to go. Are we meant to go to here? Are we meant to go to there? I'm not going to give exact facts because Time Stories is one of these games that we are... Um, if you play, if you play it Do once... Do we want to talk about it in detail? or No, I don't think so. Y- you don't? I don't think I wouldn't want to spoil it for anybody that's considering kind of playing it. What no, do, you, do you want to talk about just the mechanics of it then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think in ge- the mechanics are, um, I think the way I put it before was it's almost like um, it's almost like that Tom Cruise film "Live Die Repeat," where you just repeat the same day again mm-hmm. and again, yeah. or it's like Groundhog Day, and what you're doing is you've got. So to- I, I thought it was. Um, very much like Groundhog Day meets a uh, uh, choose your own adventure yes, book. You know, like, it was. like the old. It was, except um, you have to relive everything that you do every single time, mm-hmm. yeah. and you also have to make the choices in order to get certain pieces of the puzzle so you can work stuff out, which yeah. can be quite fun, mm-hmm. unless you've lost the notebook. That you were the, taking the, the notes had in, most and of the, the important also stuff. Yeah. The, the the people that were involved in the original first game weren't there, so you didn't have the kind of the collective memory. Yeah, I I think another problem you had was the the guy that was um, that owns the game had already played it once, mm-hmm. and he didn't want to give too much of the story away. Yes, but he also still wanted to play, so yes. he was kind of. He was, passively playing. Do you know what bit. it was like? It was like going and seeing the Force Awakens. When I went and seen the Force Awakens, when I seen it the first time, mm-hmm. I seen it with with my boy, with yes, my youngest, yeah. yeah. Well, no, sorry, no, my youngest, with my um, middle boy, yeah. When I went and seen it the second time, yeah. which was two days later, I went and seen it with my two brothers as like a birthday treat for myself. Yeah, but. I was aware that neither of them had seen it. Oh, so yeah. I had mm-hmm. to... It was still a wonderful occasion for yeah. me, but I was obviously aware kind of what was to happen. <laughs> so I was more aware of other people's reactions than my own reactions, and I guess I was checking for how people hmm. would react when Jar Jar Binks did turn up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not putting... Well, you could probably spoil Force Awakens, couldn't you? Oh, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. The big reveal. Come on, man. <laughs> Just ruined it. Just yeah. completely ruined it. No, but it is like that. You know, he's you... got that big chair and everything. It's great. <laughs> you, Misa, <laughs> Misa, you, sir, Misa, you, sir, for, sir. Um, yeah. So it's like kind of like that. The person that we're playing with had played before. Yeah. Which meant that they were neither kind of really pushing to help us, 
or mm. you got the impression that they were maybe holding back because they didn't want. So you ended up having a four-player game with three active players and one person yep. who wasn't who was really conscious of not ruining the game. It time stories is one of these things where it forces you into situations where you end up in a negative situation which there is nothing you can do about. Yeah, you know, because you're meant because to go you're right. Meant that's to be going the blind back. end. Yeah, you're meant repeat. to be going back. So there's a lot of situations where you toil through, mm-hmm. and you'll get to a point. Is it is it is it a random game? You know, is is it no, something that comes down to dice or, or is no? It's it, no. no. It, well, yes, there is. There's a dice element in it uh-huh. because basically you have these you have these locations and you'll move between locations. But you roll a dice to basically decide how much time it takes to roll between locations. Oh, you only okay. have a certain right. number of units of time before uh, right. the entire game, or that's, I guess, that attempt at the whole thing kind of resets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful looking, and it's high production values. Um, was it? Because I, I looked over and I was kind of like, hmm. You know what I mean? no, but then I, I wasn't sitting playing it. You know, I was yeah, only no. passively. No, the artwork in some cases is very, very nice. You know, I, I saw a couple. You know, I, I didn't see the cards, and mm. and I think that that the cards sort of are nice. deck of the cards, the cards is the game. Really, really set the scene. You kind of lay out cards, and you'll yeah, leave. I, for... I just saw like the the people tokens, which nah, were just which you know, were like, just a, like yeah. a, a block of wood. Yeah, and it was, it was like, a meeple almost. Yeah, basically, it was not. It was a cylinder. Yeah, it was just cylinders. It, it was a bit like YS's yes. uh, tokens. Yeah, exactly. So the cards are really, really nice, and you lay three or four down beside each other, and they create almost like a scene, and then you pick a card over, and it gives mm-hmm. you actions on what to do. It was fine. It was okay. But I think that the circumstances in which we played it mm-hmm. had a more of a negative impact than a positive impact. With, with, with in the, the break, game. instead of being able to play it all in the one yes. go with that, yes. that break and then. Yes, yeah, so the break yeah. and the change in players and the losing in the notebook. And us winning, us actually winning the whole thing was. Because I, I remember you know, talking to some of the guys that were playing at, you know, at the pub after um, the first session. Yeah. And they were hyped to play more. Oh, they were I, like, wow, we want to get this done. Yeah, well, I mean, I was yeah. really, really enthusing. When I spoke about it um, briefly last time, I was really, really enthusiastic mm. about going back. Yeah. But then when you don't have, you have to either do it in one sitting or if you... If you, you, you need that notepad, don't oh, you lose need the, the notepad. <laughs> you need the notepad, don't lose the notepad. And also make sure you're playing with the same people. because, yeah. And also make sure you're playing with somebody... Nobody that's played it before. Yeah. Which is difficult to do because... The guy that owns it will want, want to play it. Want to play it again because it's like one of those games. Um, it kind of hits the value a bit. Yeah, I've, that was sort of the sort of group feeling after you guys had, had finished the game was, uh, right, well, I'm not playing that again, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And not, not through... Through you didn't want to play it again. It's the fact. Well, I know the story. And yeah. I can't play it again. No, you know, I mean it was the outcome. I mean, you don't want to spoil it, but when you get when you get to the end and you're kind of like, mm-hmm. oh okay. But if you, the worst thing is if you get to the end and you fail it, then you can't go back. It's not like other games. It's not like right. other games where you feel that if you fail this, you can attempt it again. Because you know pretty much everything you, you know that could have much. offered. Yeah, so you know too much you to be, be able to You would be cheating it too much Ooh. if you were to... Yeah, you would want to rush through and you know stuff and everything like that. How, so, how much is the actual game? I think um, it's about 30-odd. I think it's 30-odd pound or something. 30, mm-hmm. 35 pound. And they've been talking, or, or they have, you know, They've got expansions. N- like new, yeah. yeah. But then again, these expansions are all one-offs. This isn't hmm. like maybe buying... I don't know, a Descent expansion or... I know it's a different game, but, you know, <laughs> buying a normal expansion for a game, you would yeah. usually be in- increasing the replayability of a game by allowing you to use pieces from the expansion in the main game. Yeah. Could, could this be um, a board game that might actually suit going on to being, you know, like a, 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 an app? Yes, you know, yeah, like I an think Amazon this, app or, or an iOS app. I think app. this would play fantastically on an iPad. Yeah. 
because you could have an app that tracks everything. Uh-huh. You could also Because there see, seemed to be an awful lot of, right, okay, we've lost this now, yes. put the token there. It's kind of learning stuff and, and also having mm. the ability to have a notepad at the side where you could mm. highlight something as a key clue. Yeah. And then that would remind you you'd have it all sitting there. It is one of these things, and I don't think you would you would feel that you had spent an awful lot of money on an app that maybe cost, say, maybe five to five five, six, seven pounds. Yeah. And you got four or five hours entertainment out of it. Um You probably wouldn't feel too bad over No, and then if you bought the expansions might, yeah. afterwards you would be fine. It's really weird because like a lot of the games we've played, we've maybe played once or twice, but at least I know that we can go back and we can play Rivet Wars again or you know wow, we, we, we you know we've we played can, Rivet Wars about six times. Yeah, so we can go back. Us, but imagine yeah. paying something like maybe something I don't know, twenty pound less or fifteen pound less than what you played for Rivet Wars, and that was it. And only getting one playthrough. Yeah, mm. it would be something I would have to think about. Re- you know, look seriously it, think about. Because yeah. you know, most of my board games are snap decisions of do yeah. I want this? Yes, I, mean, I look want at, this. Look at it this way: <laughs> if this was one of those indie games mm. uh, on a PC that you see, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. where you're gone homes and life is strange and stuff like that, yeah, you wouldn't want to pay the full top white whack for it because you get one go at it and that's mm. it and then the kind of thing's ruined. Well, I'm so, sure that I, I hate well I don't hate to suggest it but you know you, if you look at a wee second hand copy of it then. Yeah and I think yeah. the market for the second hand market on it is very very high because you only play I know it. that that doesn't help the, the company release new sets of the game but yeah. uh, you know, if everyone just on the buys other, the second hand. Um, yeah I know, I know it's a difficult <laughs> one. It's I can. There's part of me that would say if you were asking the first time I played it, would I recommend it? Yes, get it, get it and play it. Oh, you guys yeah, were absolutely psyched. It. And the I way think the it was circumstances, just that second the circumstances the first that, yeah, the circumstances that when the way we played the second and third game, we were a bit bummed out by it. Mm. Players changed again, yeah. and Mister Leo never came back again. I don't think because he was then away. Yeah. So his nice little iconography. Fatical, typographical, <laughs> fantastical memory just wasn't there as well, which yeah. would have helped matters. So, um, time stories, mm, maybe another time, I think, in all seriousness. Um, but yeah, but as I say, Pixel Tactics, definitely. Oh, I love Pixel love Tactics. Yes. Really cheap game Fantastic, as well. Fantastic, <laughs> yes, brilliant, brilliant. And Is it the re- same price as the expansion? If you're looking yeah, at two sides of the um, two sides of the spectrum in terms of re- replayability, Pixel Tactics is staring at Time Stories and going, "Hello, I'll get you a taxi." Well, a, a quick summary of Pixel Tactics: of you have your squad, and your squad consists of a leader, which is. Um, it, it's a deck game, mm. and uh, you have a, a deck of 25 cards. You pick your leader from the first five cards that you draw. Yeah. You know, just random draw. And then each card you have from then on has four options with what you do it. So every single game has so many hundreds of combinations that, that could happen. And, um, and if you go back to some the previous episode, which I'll need to remember the episode. Oh, It'll be there. It's episode four or something like that. It's episode <laughs> Hejibidjibidji, something like Tactics in the Dark or something like that. But we'll go back and visit it. Um, so those are the two that we've been playing while we've been trying to get games organised. But we did mm. manage a little while ago to play Wise. Well, we've got two games of Wise? Yes. So. No. Do you, do you remember it? It was so long ago. It was so long ago. <laughs> I remember when I went in, that table was Nout but Fields. Um, <laughs> yes, so we got... This it's is the, the first one about one. the aircraft, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. It is the one about the jewels. Mm. And it is... How would you describe it? The genre of game that it is, it's one of these um, games where your actions... It's an end result score. The yes, entire yeah, result, you, you're the entire going for, result, for, yeah. for the, the score you have at the end is who your wins. victory points. Yeah. It's very much like, say, like your Forge War, which is the same thing, or yep. Seven Wonders, mm-hmm. which is another game where you've got mm-hmm. your score points as well. Power Grid, 
Yes, I believe yeah, also it's, 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 it's very much what we would term a Euro game of, yes. of points, points equal the prizes. Yes. <laughs> now, Mr. Colin, do you want to explain to the good people what YS is all about? What is the theme? Yes, it's it's set in, uh, it might be a real city, uh, but it uh, might not be. And um, you're basically a jewel merchant. Now, you're not the... the so you're waiting on cargo ships coming in with new jewels. Mm -hmm. And um, you're trying to acquire as many of them as you can. And if you acquire the most of a certain type of jewel, then you win that jewel section. Yes. Um, but how we go about getting the actual jewels, the, the map is broken up. It's sort of like a circular map. Yes. And it's broken up into to four parts. Yes. And each of those four parts has three different sections. Mm -hmm. One is the port. Yes. And if you win the port area, then you win the gemstones. Yes. If you go for the middle area, you just win um, influence. Yes. Or you can go for what it calls the palace, and then you get one of the king's favours, which is a, a card that allows you to change some of the rules of the game. Yeah. You, know, you can play yeah. whenever you want. Yeah. And to win one of these sections, it's all done by this really great blind bidding, which which just makes so much backstabbing. You should see the grin on his face <laughs> right now, because... Um, Colin is very good at these type of games. I'm I don't not, know if I'm it's awful. the way your mind works, but you seem <laughs> to have an ability to go, oh yes, if I put this here, and this there, and this there. Meanwhile, I'm probably about three quarters into the first game before I finally go, oh right, that's what I should have been yes, doing. Yeah, yeah, Which is yeah. almost the same with me. Um, yeah, I should be putting it there, because you have like these wooden, different coloured dolls. Yep. And on the base of every one of these dells is a number. Yep. And what you do is you have, you've got the main kind of circle, as Colin explained, with the sectors. But then off to one side, you've also got like a jewel You, you have the actual jewel market. And that um, there's three, uh, four, sorry, different colours of gem stones yes. that you can get. There's, there's um, red, green. Yeah. White. Oh, there's five colours of gemstones okay, you can okay. get. <laughs> okay. We use four. Red, red, green, blue, and yellow gems. And, the, and, the, and, and white is like a random, so you, you exchange the white ones for whatever colour you want at the time. And there's purple. There's black there's not, as well. Oh, there is black, there's as, black as well. So that's six <laughs> colours of gemstones. Of gems. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we can sorry. edit it out, right? Okay, let's put a let's put a, put a marker in. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's good to have you back. Yes, yeah, it's yeah good my, to have amazing you memory for games. We've still got other things to talk about. But the the gem market um, is broken up into um, it's basically a, a square. Yeah. Um, so there's columns and rows, mm -hmm. and if you win the row you win another gemstone. Yes. But what you're trying to do is win the columns. Because yes. the columns mean you can alter the price that each of the gems is worth. Yes. And you're trying to basically go for a colour. So you pick blue. And you try and win the marketplaces where you'll get the most blue gems. Yes. And you also want to manipulate the marketplace so that the blue gems are worth the most. And... Um, the idea being at the end of the game when it comes to these points is that you have manipulated the market enough to increase... The, the, the gems you've taken are yeah. worth the most and you While have the most While at the same them. time you've got the potential yeah. to lower the value of, of other people's of the gems other ones. as so well. You could see that the person who's second closest to you in gems has gone heavily for yellow and you could make the price of yellow gems fall so that your gems yes. are worth more. Yes, like what you yeah. did to me. Yes. Which was nice. Yes. It was nice. Yes. Where did I finish in this game? Uh, Second last? Last? Uh, yes, I was last. Yes, there's only two <laughs> positions when we're playing a game like this. Um, how easy is it to learn, would you say? Is it a it's, quite... It's it's a typical Euro game of yes. it takes seconds to explain the rules. Yes. But it will take a long time before it finally clicks in, in your head and you go, 
Oh, right. So there's at least one or two games you want to play. And it's learning how you should be manipulating the board and mm. where you should be placing things in the first place. Because this, um, the, the guy that won the game that we were playing, and yeah. he did a tactic I'd never seen anyone win with before. And that was, he basically just went for the middle tier. He mm. didn't really go for the gems all that much. No. He basically, he just went for um, the middle tier and... He, he he got points every round as opposed to his yes. end score points, which is what yes. I went for, weren't you? Yes, and I just went for the ones that looked the prettiest. Oh. Which was nice. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Gem now, me up. How you actually bid in the game is yes. where the fun of the game is. You have um, nine tokens. And uh, these tokens are blank on one side and have a number on the other side. And the number's um, zero to four. Mm -hmm. And every turn, you've got to place down two markers. You've got to place one down face up so yes. everyone can see the score. And yes. the other one you place face down. And you can put that anywhere on the map that you want. So you could yes. absolutely try and one win the one zone by putting yeah. everything you have in the one zone. Yes. Don't recommend that. But. No, no, because you also <laughs> want to be very aware that at some point you've got to put stuff in the market because the market yep. is where the control is. It's yeah. all very well winning points, mm. winning the additional cards which allow you to do certain things, yep. or winning the gems themselves. If you don't have control of the market, you could, in effect, have a whole pile of, say, blue gems or whatever. Yes. And, and, and they'd be worth nothing because somebody has gone in and sunk the price of blue gems to... Yeah, to well, at the end of the worthless. game, you could find out that even though you control all the blue gems in the game, you only get nine points. Exactly. Whereas is, the person that made yellow yeah. the most valuable one gets yeah, 36 just, they just, points. They're just romping so, home every yeah. single time. Looks-wise... It's... Oh, it's not an impressive-looking no, game. It's not, but it's the, not. The gems are really nice. Yes, they are. They're pretty. The wooden tokens are wooden tokens. They're little dolls, painted dolls yeah. with numbers on them. You're and, not going to find excitement there. But the board nice. looks good, yes. but it's all really... You know, you can look at it and go, that's what this is. You know, mm. it's functional more than, than, than sexy. Yeah, you know. exactly. Exactly. Um, in terms of money... I think I've seen it for... It's not too bad. Well, thanks to the works here in the UK, mm. um, it's about 10 quid on yes. um, eBay yes. um, to get a copy of it. Um, probably, I think it's about 22 on Amazon. Yeah, that's what you'll be looking at. Um, value for money-wise is the replayability. Yeah, it's lots of games. I guess if, if you look past the simple aesthetics yeah. and you get into the mechanics... It can be something that can turn into a full blown if, kind of game of chess almost in terms of your tactics and it's, how you it's know. the backstabbing of the blind yes. the blind bid because yes. the, the amount of times you know, he's put that token down, you've looked at the board, he's not put his four down. He no. must have put his four down in that section, but yeah. I really need that section. So you end up putting all of your things in there to beat his yeah. one face up two and his face down one. And then when it comes to the big reveal at the end of the end of the turn, it's he's a, just put a zero there. Yeah. You've wasted all your good tokens trying to and win that just, section. Yes, don't remind me. <laughs> Thank you about that. Again. It happens to me so much. <laughs> I'm like, I must um, win. <laughs> Um, so we liked it. Um, we would certainly play it again. It's definitely mm. worth. It's worthwhile picking up um, for those people that like. You know, if you're into your power grid, if you you know, if you like, like your yeah. Euro games, if you yeah. like your brain drain game, yeah. then yeah. Oh, AP. It does have a Analysis, little bit of paralysis, paralysis in it. Yeah. This. You play that. What are you putting your dill? I'm putting it over here. Where are you putting that? Are you got the jewel yet? And you get going. I can't believe you put that there. Inside your head, there's like rage and murder going on. So that was uh, really but, best, I would say, with the full four players. Yes. Um, doesn't but, really hold up when it's just the two because no. it's a wee bit hard to. And trick then it's people. it is almost kind of like that extra player adds such a little bit more mm. interest to the blind bidding because you're obviously competing against yeah. a couple of people. So yes, we would definitely. Yeah, it's value for money, and you'll definitely get a lot of replayability out of it. And it's certainly. Um, Especially if you can pick it up for a tenner. 
Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, there's not. I mean, you'll not find any kind of the only fighting that you'll see going on. Well, it might be at the end when you realise you've been done over. No, well, your well, because of the blind bidding, it is really backstabbing every every turn <laughs> of the game. You're like, what? Why? Why are you doing this to me? Why? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, speaking of preparing a backstab, oh. the next game that we promised we would play, yes. long before the latest yes, episode is made yeah. out, yeah, you've um, owned this game for how long? Really? I can't even. <laughs> I can't even talk about it. Um, it's Dungeon Saga. We finally got. To we play finally it. played Dungeon Saga. Now, for those who are not aware, if you're listening to this now, if you listen to the episode just before this. I had a quick interview with Matt Gilbert, who mm-hmm. is the COO of Mantic Games. So he was mm-hmm. delightful enough to give me his time ah, after yes. what we said about his book box. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, after and I what asked, was the book box? <laughs> I asked him the question. You know, I, I did. I did actually say, right, okay, this book that doesn't fit in the book box, who do I shout at? Now, anyone else, right, if they'd asked, if they'd listened yep. to previous episodes, if they'd said you want to come on the show and talk about <laughs> what, was, what, what happened, they would have went, no, your podcast, what? We're not, what is it? Is? What is it called? We, 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 we have not, slagged Mantic not, we quite have badly. Said, <laughs> we have slagged it. But in all honesty, um, if you listen to the episode, um, the sound quality isn't the best, which is a technical thing that happened on our side. The grace in which he answered the questions and stuff like that. I (laughs) I took my hat off to him and went, you know, fair play, mate. You know, you could have come on and said a whole part. You could have talked the company line Mm -hmm. and said things happened and mistakes were made. But he was, he was, he was, um, he was a good lad. And I really appreciate it. So the game. The game. (laughs) Mantic games are, in essence, famous for their ability to take an existing game that is out there already Mm -hmm. and put a mantic spin onto it so in their catalogue of previous games you've got your you know you've got your dreadball blood bowl anybody you've got your kings of war kind of you know tabletop skirmish game and stuff like that they they, they are the the a couple of their their yeah. game designers Ronnie, are ex yeah. GW who's there. guys. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is an ex G. He is a um, ex Games Workshop guy. So that's that's to be expected. I don't have Dread Ball. I've got Elf Ball, which is the other guy that yeah. made Blood Ball. <laughs> well, the guys of the club, a couple of them were playing Dread Ball. On yeah, it Friday got night. quite common. Um, yeah, for, for, uh, it, Simon and John were playing yeah. on it. Oh, they they playing it again? Aren't yeah, they? I think they were bringing. So I was going to pick up a team and, and join in, but. The club sort of died away from the game, so let's get some. Could do. We could yeah. do. We could do. Dungeon Dungeon Saga is in essence trying to climb on the back of this nostalgic horse, which is your hero quests of this world and any kind of dungeon, uh, dungeon crawler that you've played. Descent, or descent, and stuff like that. Catacombs. <laughs> it'll never be catacombs. It will never be, catacombs. Never be catacombs. Um and my wallet will never be the same after, <laughs> after catacombs pledge manager hit us recently. Um and didn't it do well? It did do well. <laughs> it did very well. No kids, you can't have shoes. Um but going back, Dungeons Dungeon Saga is in essence, imagine if Hero Quest went away, spent a couple of years at uni got itself a little degree, mm-hmm. went out and got drunk a bit, grew itself a nice little bit of facial hair, grew its hair long, started to be a bit more grungier. Um, well, went, went went out, started working out. Yeah, got a bit buff. Yeah. You know, started knowing the way with the ladies. I know, it was <laughs> <laughs> Um But, yeah, um, it's... It is essentially kind of grown up hero quest, and it's it's mm-hmm. a mixture of the same. You will basically face um, numbers of missions where you will play certain characters, and again, ribbon off the he- riffing off hero quest. You've got the barbarian, you've got the dwarf, you've got the elf, you've got the magician. Yeah. And the idea is that you play through certain missions. Um, one of you you've will. You've got p- the paladin. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shush. That's somebody else. Um, you've got an. Um, yeah, it's a paladin, isn't it? It is a paladin. Oh, yeah. for goodness sake. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Let's just stop. 
I remember why. <laughs> <laughs> I remember why I have you on now. Because <laughs> you're one of the founders. Um, no, it's um, so you're playing the car- character against the Dark Overlord character. Yeah, um, he gets the most fun. Yeah, because he gets yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So you set up the. I mean, if you're used to playing Descent, or if you have played Hero Quest, you're essentially setting up a map where the heroes will start on one side and they have an objective to reach. And like... Yeah, hero- they, they'll have things they have to achieve, achieve. on, on yeah. the map. And yeah. the guy playing the Overlord... Basically has yeah. to hurt them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that. But, you know, the, the, the sort of map is... is It's a collection of... of um, Card pieces which, which are all tiled laid out. Yes, it's all, yeah. it, it all looks super amazing. You yeah. know, it's like really nice graphics on on the cards. Yeah, um, we're not we're not during this discussion about Dungeon Saga. We're not going to talk about the Kickstarter side of things. No, 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 no. It's been covered. If you want to hear about that, then listen. Well, to it's the a previous launch episode. game now. It's, yeah. it's not a Kickstarter. It's doing anymore. itself on its um, it's doing itself on the retail side of things. Mm-hmm. So it's doing quite well. Oh, that's good. But you've got your tiles that you lay out according to a map. You'll then have um, the adversaries, the monsters that you yeah. lay down. And the overlord, like um, the overlord, will have a deck of cards mm-hmm. where they will be allowed to take kind of additional, kind of additional actions. Um, you will. It's the usual. You have a you have a, a movement number that you can move, yeah. and so then you, move you have so many squares on yeah, the on the tile pieces. So many squares on the tile pieces, and then you've got the option to attack somebody. Um, or you can use an item, or you can you can cast a spell. Yeah. Um, what was the, the interesting thing I found there was the you had to was it move first or was it attack? You move first, yeah, then was, you attack. You, yeah. you had yeah. to move if you know. There's an awful lot of these games. It's you get the choice of of you you can either move and then do your action, or do your action and then move. Yes, it's quite interesting with the fact that you're stuck with this. You have no, to move. You have to move. Yes, or do your action. And the reason for that is because unlike um, unless it's stipulated in things like say mm-hmm. descent, you have a finite am- amount of time in order to complete the mission. The way it works is the the overlord do has we? Do, do we, yeah yeah did we on play that, that wrong yeah. then did we yeah yeah we just got you've got until no we said until all the cards were used up ah yes yes ah. all right yeah, okay <laughs> so the overlord has say twelve cards or fifteen cards or twenty cards or twenty five cards and what he does on his turn is he will he will basically have a set number of actions so he will not be able to move. Every single model that is active, on yes, the board. Yeah, he, he, he'll only have like say two activations. Yeah, but well, he, what does he actually get? He he gets um, it's all like undead creatures and yeah. everything. Yeah, so he goes zombies. Yeah. But you, you only know. get so many of each type that yes. you're allowed to have yeah. on the map. So you're allowed. You get told you've got a limit. So you'll say, okay, you're allowed four skeleton warriors and you're allowed two zombies. Mm-hmm. So you can't go kind of you'll have piles of bones that are placed all the way around the board and as an overlord player one of your actions can be to raise one of these bone Mm -hmm. piles but cleverly enough you're only allowed to raise a certain limit so you can't go raise crazy and just raise every single kind Mm -hmm. of uh, adversary or, or skeleton or whatever that you've got yeah um oh is that our star it's the microwave ready get the popcorn um that's fine. So, yeah. So you, so you, so the the overlord then has a card, and what they do with their card is the it allows them to raise the dead, raise more dead, yeah. or it allows them to take more actions, or in some cases it allows them to interrupt the player, which means that they can. Usually the heroes move and then the the overlord oh, I, players I, I move. I didn't get to see that. And then the interrupt allows you to, if one hero moves, you can play an interrupt card so the mm. overlord can step in and have a shot and then the hero gets their shot, their shot again. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got, 
as I say, the, the thing with it is that it's trying to keep you going, which is, and the reason is because if you run out of Overlord cards, then that's it, it's game over. The Overlord is effectively won and has won that kind of round. So that's how the Overlord wins. Yes. Right. Either that or they wipe out the other, they wipe out all the, the heroes, which mm-hmm. makes it kind of kind of interesting, which is why it's pushing you to really move. really difficult to achieve. <laughs> I think that they've, I think you, some people have house ruled it. Mm-hmm. So that they have increased the number of turns that you get, because I can believe in certain situations, if the overlord plays his cards right, he could pin you down. Right. Because okay. when you do a fight, um, and this was quite, this is what I kind of found interesting. You would, you would roll, you would both roll dice. Um, you would both, you would both roll dice, and then, um. You would both roll your dice, and then what you would do is you would remove all the ones which are the minimal amount of armor, or mm-hmm. which fall under the kind of the creature's yeah. armor rating, and then you would match up the ones that are left to see which one's gonna kind of win against each other. Mm-hmm. Um, if you manage to hit a couple of times, then you might just reduce the enemy to a pile of bones again. Yes, so yeah. you had to really, really strike them in order to um, you had to really, really strike them in order to kind of completely remove them from the board. If you just managed to hit them, yeah, then you were mm. turning them into a pile of bones, which means the threat wasn't entirely gone because in the next move, the overlord player had the chance to kind of resurrect them again. Mm. But there was some other things as well which I thought were quite good. It had the um, it had the arc of attack, which yes, meant yeah, that, the, 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 that if yeah if if um, you had the kind of eight squares at the front of you were your front arc, and there's mm-hmm. three squares behind you. Was it eight, six, six, five, and three? It will be the five in front of you, the three behind you. I can't count today. Um, the three behind you were your rear arc, and if a if a enemy got behind you, then it reduced the number of action dice that you could use when you were def- when you were um, defending yourself. Um, when you were defending yourself, if two creatures got into your front arc, you were considered, or they were, they, you were considered outnumbered, yeah. and it would affect your ability to attack. If you got injured enough, it affected your ability mm-hmm. to attack as well. If you were caught in a creature, as, as soon as you moved into an enemy's front arc, you couldn't move. You couldn't run past somebody and keep going. As soon as you were in the front arc, you had to engage with them. Yeah. And at the same time, if you were in front, if you were in the front arc and you had to, you tried to move, then they got an attack of opportunity. Mm-hmm. From that, it was. I mean, I played the Overlord when we played. Yeah, we didn't get very far into the campaign, unfortunately. No, no. So we only got to see the sort of learn the mechanics. Yeah, I got, you know got a couple more games done with, yeah. with Leo and that. So that was with Mister Leo. So that was that was good. But the interest was that the first thing that was um, that we noticed is it's very very easy and quick to learn. The kind of mm. the basic mechanics and get yourself playing and kind of get yourself going. Yeah. The miniatures look absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And the rules themselves kind of play very, very simply. There's the spell mechanic, yep. which was cool, which yeah. you yeah. would you would use a spell and then rather than turn the card over to say you'd use the spell, you would actually turn it 180 degrees. And then at the end, depending on the type of spell, yeah. if it was a strong spell, you'd turn it 180 degrees, and then at the end of the round, you'd rotate it clockwise by 90 degrees. So effectively, a strong spell, it would take two turns before you could use it yeah. again. Whereas a weak spell, you were able to do it like after you know after every turn, it would reset, and you were able to use it again and again and again. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of cool. Um each of the heroes had um, a, a once per game ability as well. Yeah. So, like so that the... was quite interesting. But also, interestingly enough, if depending on the type of hero, some of the heroes were quite squishy. 
Yes, so the magician yeah. character, um, they all had you. like high. They all have like five, basically five hit points. Mm-hmm. So if it doesn't matter if somebody hits you, if you're the hero, they could hit you successfully three times with an attack, but you'd only ever lose kind of one, one heart. One you heart. get marked on yep. the one heart. But the way the the board was the board is marked is that some of the health points um, out of the five health points, some of the health points are actually marked red. Yep. And what happens is if you put down enough hearts and you ended up the colour of all of your hearts was red, it meant that you automatically were injured. Yep. And that meant that you could only roll one less attack dice, mm-hmm. which was kind of interesting. There was also an experience system you could bring into play, whereas as you beat as you beat um, enemies, you got yourself a star. Once you got up to a certain number of stars, you would allow to have like a one-off use dice to kind of get you into kind of different situations. Mm -hmm. The the minis are the the minis are stunning sculpts. Well, they're they're a miniature making company, so you know you were expecting good miniatures, and then. And I appreciate they are they are really yeah. nice sculpts and and um, and um, yeah and at the time I mean I was told you know we were told um, by Matt that the equipment's like tens of thousands a time so oh yeah yeah to get you know to get it up to the to the standard that they want so the, the sculpts themselves are really really good um, and so if you're a great painter you know you you yeah, can have some. You'd, Real fun with, you'd with have the to be, miniatures. You'd have to be a really, really good painter because they're really cool. They're quite, they're mm. small, but they're very, very intricate. They're you kind of beautiful looking. Well, they're, they're your sort of standard um, twenty-eight millimeter yeah. miniature. Yeah, um, they're decent, and, and then the detail was the detail was fan detail was fantastic. Yeah. Um, the standard game at the moment goes for about forty pounds. Mm-hmm. And for that, you get the kind of the dwarf, the entire kind of dwarf campaign. You get your mm-hmm. miniatures, um, your heroes. You get your kind of your standard kind of um, skeleton army to kind of to, to to face off against. There's already so many expansions that you can pick have up. They, for have, it they, have they done yeah. a load of? Uh, yeah, nice. there's already yeah. a couple of expansions that are, that have come out that you can buy separately. Well, uh, nicely enough, they've also released the resin tokens, which. We were using, yep. which mm-hmm. instead of the paper ones, really kind of the cardboard ones, really really make a difference. Um, they, they were more sort of laser cut tokens yeah. and then than yeah. sort of like a raisin. Uh, and they really they really really add an awful lot to the game and they make it a lot more kind mm. of hard hard wearing. Ish in terms of things I don't like, game setup on something like this should not take. To it shouldn't take that long, and one of the f- one of the failings I found with Dungeon Saga was that the tiles themselves weren't marked or didn't seem to be marked yes. in any way, shape, or yeah, form. Yeah, it's a shame. You know, you were yeah. having to search for the same picture on the map. Mm. All right, so it's that that size piece that I need, mm. and it's this particular picture mm-hmm. of that. So um, unlike, say, Descent, which was marked, the actual tiles yeah, were was, marked. Yeah, you know, like a C2 the, piece we want here and a, yeah, a, a, yeah. a B4 it, piece here. It made that um, you were searching effectively through usually two bags mm. in order to find the pieces that you were on. Yeah. It wasn't a game breaker. No, nope, no, no. It but it just, it just took a little bit of time to, to kind of set up. What I did like about the the scale that they've gone for is it doesn't take up as much space as Descent needs. No, absolutely not. The um, the squares and miniatures are about um, two thirds the size. Yeah. What, what, yeah. Yeah. About two thirds the size of of the Descent scale. If yeah. if you know Descent, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be talking as though you know it because you, you, you might you never might have heard be. of it. <laughs> um, yeah. Twenty. It's twenty eight mil for the. Yeah. F- um, and the Descent ones are are slightly taller, like thirty five or something. Uh, like. I think there would be thirty two mil. Right. So you're looking at a difference in height, but what that means is a difference in the size of the base, which means a difference yes, in the size yeah. of the tiles. Mm-hmm. But we were we were easily able to um, play a game on maybe three qua- three quarters to two thirds of a standard kind of kitchen table because mm-hmm. the layout yep. wasn't the layout wasn't massively wasn't massively um, 
you know mass massively huge. In terms of setting up um, the cards and things like that, again, because you've got a limited number of cards that you have to use for the Overlord, um, you do get playable characters the, for the Overlord as well. The, which there was a lot of, of stuff, um, but uh, the way it came, you know, with the, you know, because we were only doing the beginning campaigns, mm, mm. it came listed like that. It was like, Use the, the first you know, pack the that you first get. Pack, use this pack, use this and pack it had first, yeah. everything we needed for the first... Yeah. Well, we, we only got four games into it, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, of, of the first campaign. Yeah. Uh, and you've got the two campaigns because you're a Kickstarter, if I remember. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, the so the, the cards were there. The, 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 um, the artwork was, was decent. Um, the sculpts were decent. The the game is it's very very easy to play. Hmm. People that have probably little collections of Hero Quest or have played Hero Quest in the yes, past yeah, yeah. would probably get a, wa- a a kind of a waft of nostalgia coming off when they played yeah. it. Absolutely, and even somebody that maybe wants to play Descent, but. Especially because it's D six game, if you know what I mean. You know, it's yeah. not like Descent, where it's those weird dice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, even that kind of thing, you know, it's kind of toe to toe there with 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 what Descent with what Descent is. I mean, that is unfortunately, you know, c- comparisons between the two games you're always going to get, but they are very different feeling games when when you sit down. Yeah, when play. you play them, there's yeah. a difference in the kind of the tacticals and the movement and everything like that. That is all kind of very, 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 very difficult. Different. It is quite easy to play and pick up, and everybody that I played it, um, including like Mr. Leo, Stu had a game as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they all kind of found it very, very easy just to pick up and dive in and play. Yeah. In terms of value for money, forty quid. It's not. It's not going to break the bank. Um, it's. It's. Unfortunately, that's the standard price of a, a yeah. board game, and know, it's let's of, face of, it, of, of a and it's sport. twenty quid cheaper than a video game <laughs> at the moment, from yeah. what I can see. You know, so it's not um, oh, for you, you know, console plebs. I know, <laughs> I know, I don't have such a thing as a Steam sale unless I'm buying an iron or a kettle. Um, yeah, I liked it. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play some more of it. Um, there's there's mechanics and there's going to be more equipment that you can get as you go on. There is a mm-hmm. campaign. There seems to be tons and tons of expansions. And also looking at the books I've got, the missions, we just scratched the surface with regards yeah, to Yeah, unfortunately. The missions, there's like, we, you know, we've there's, just had no time to yeah, sit down no and time. play, unfortunately. But what I've seen and what I've played of Dungeon Saga, I, you know, I enjoyed. I didn't, you know, Unlike Descent, we didn't get that game where it was so stacked to one side. Yeah. And we didn't get, you know, the game where it was so, you know, obvious that oh, yeah. this is one for the heroes to win piecemeal. No. Well, we we did get that because we were playing the first four missions, yeah, which are, yeah, 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 are yeah, how yeah. do we play this game? Yeah. But um <laughs> and yeah. slowly introducing more and more mechanics to the game, but uh, Yeah. And I, the the other games I played I certainly certainly enjoyed them, so hmm. Um, yeah, if you're interested in a, a simple dungeon crawler, then it's certainly worthwhile worthwhile looking at. Yes, um, yeah. And they've announced they're doing Star Saga. Oh, so a space version. Of yes. Because they, well, they, they've they they've got a huge sort of sci-fi range of their miniatures. So, yeah. yeah so, so we'll see the quality for that will be. We'll, we'll keep it. We'll, well, we'll take an eye on that, and we'll, we'll have a look. And if we mm. look at that, I think it's there's a. Their campaign for that starting at the end of the month. Is it? Oh, yes, apparently so. Apparently so. Um, moving on, mm-hmm. we've obviously spoke about what we've got to the table. Yes. What would we like to get off the shelf, Mister Colin? I, I don't know why I'm calling you Mister Colin. It's because oh. I've I feel I've not we've not done this in a while, and I feel I should be polite. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost our gruffness. We have lost Show our gruffness. Show your shoes, governor. All right, man. Do you want a cup of tea? Do you want a cup of tea? Do you want to sit down? Do you want to sit down? How about a crumpet, sir? Do you want a capri? Show um, your shoes, governor. <laughs> Please, sir, can I have some more? Um, Getting them off the shelf. What are we going to play, Colin? 
A, well, I was going to go with Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal, which is by Rio Grande Games. Yeah, because I don't have very many Rio Grande Games. No, you don't like your Rio <laughs> Grande Games at all, do you? <laughs> Taj Mahal, let's grab the box. We're going to do live mm. and interactive. We're gonna. I'm going to try and not steal away from the microphone. So let's get the box here. And it says, Control of India in the beginning of the 18th century is up for grabs. The 200-year-long rule of the Grand Moguls has collapsed. Now is the time for the most powerful Maharishis and princes to take control of the Indian subcontinent. The player used strategy and cunning to win influence over India, province by province and city by city. And the most successful player, i.e. the winner, is the one who establishes the most magnificent palaces and has the most power in the end. And the game comes with hundreds of little it Taj Mahal. It's, like, you know, it's not just like one. There's tons of them. <laughs> so we're going to be playing that because it just kind of looks interesting and different and fantastic. It's an ever horror Euro game. So <laughs> yes, it's your lovely, lovely yes. But then I've got a taste for the Euros. Yes, I've I've winged you off the yeah, American well, game. Yeah, so. I, well, you almost win because the next game that we're going to be playing. Yeah. Which is a surprise. <laughs> is um, before XCOM, the XCOM board game came out, there was a game that tried to be XCOM, and it was called Galaxy Defenders. Oh yes, by and it's by Ares and the Gremlin Project. We've opened this box. We have opened. We've, <laughs> got, we've opened it and we've sniffed it and we've liked what we've sniffed. And uh, so we're going to be playing that. We don't know when, but we're <laughs> going to be playing it soon because what's any time ha- in the next six anytime, months? Anytime, <laughs> anything can happen in the next half hour. Kind of um, <laughs> nonsense like that. So that is what we're going to be playing. Yeah, this is getting them off the shelf. Should be good fun. The miniatures are cool. It's hexagonals. It's not. Yes, a red. so it is. Yeah, it's a hexagonal board. If I remember right, yeah. it's that long. Yeah, it's been that long ago, but it is a hexagonal board that you build up, so it's kind of oh, I'm like... thinking a completely different game. Oh my goodness, what are you thinking about? No, City of Remnants, that's what City I'm thinking of. City of Remnants. <laughs> we should play that again, because that's a good game, but we'll get, that, we'll get that down. But I have been promising a guy called Gary, who gave me a shot at this game, that I would we would play it. Because every time I speak to him, he's like, you played Galaxy Defenders then? And I was like, no. And he was like, when are you going to play it? Well, I'm going to pick it for the next show. And they asked me about four weeks ago, you played Galaxy Defenders yet? And I went, we're going to do it in the next show. And of course, then the next show didn't happen for a long time. So now I'm saying, Mr. Gary, sir, we are going to be playing Galaxy Defenders. Mm -hmm. As I say, Aries and the Gremlin Project, there will be a link in the show notes. (sighs) Wow. Breathe in, breathe out. Have a have a cup of tea. Have a sip of tea because I've got a bit of a sore. Th- well, I've got a bit of a dry throat. I don't know it's, why. It's the house. Uh, we've got a wee air conditioning unit from hmm. my dad. So it is a cracking cup of tea, though. I must admit. Wow, it's That's Tesco's like, cheapest. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with Tesco's cheapest, as you can tell. I'm a bit cheap myself. Um, Hatch sweepings. <laughs> it's even real it's, tea. It's, not, it's just a dry bits. <laughs> they fell off the yucca plant and they go brown when you add hot water to them. You go to these fancy tea shops and they give you leaves. No, no, no. no. We, we don't have tea bags with no, leaves in it. You've got powder. <laughs> we've we, we got a little bits of twig. It's freeze dried. It's All the of, flavors in the twig. Exactly. It's just dishwater that's been left for three days and we add some sugar to it. Um, give them a kick. Give Give them a a kick kick. is the part of the show where we talk about games that we have potentially seen on Kickstarter that we would maybe like you to think about considering having a quick look if you're ever into your Kickstarter. Now, just recently, because we're going to go back a couple of episodes, Mm. we have been speaking to... Uh, We had an interview with Lucy and Jim Kiefer who were doing their Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty's web game. So that's still currently on Kickstarter. It's got about 10 days to go. And it's been Mm -hmm. talked about in a previous episode. So if you want to check that out, it's a fascinating interview. The guy, that was the guy that invented Thunder Road. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, fascinating. 
And second, <laughs> second, don't shake your head at me. And secondly, um, the last episode we did before the Mantic Games one, we uh, had a chat with Gary Devereaux and Aiden, mm-hmm. um, uh, who um, are releasing their game called Purgatory, which is the battle for heaven and hell, apparently. It's a skirmish, skirmish game. We'll have a look at it later mm-hmm. on because I think you might like it. It might be good. That's coming out on the 10th of October. So again, look, listen to that episode and that should be good fun and worthwhile taking a look at. But what we're we'll looking at today, there's two games that we want to um, kind of draw your attention to. One of them is an expansion for an existing game um, called um, Ember, the card game. And this is called, the expansion is called From, From the Ashes. Now, I like art. And one of the things that really caught my eye on the expansion is the well. I'm going to show Colin, and I'm going to let him. I'm going to let him tell me what he thinks of the art on this particular game. Let me show you this. This is live, and you'll see it on the camera <laughs> as well. Okay, look at that. Ah, yeah, it's nice and colourful. It? it is nice and colourful. It's basically a game. This is an expansion to um, this is an expansion to Ember, which is all about um, it's about creating sets of cards mm-hmm. and playing those cards in order to um, in order to defeat your opponents, basically. And they take on the roles of apprentice spellcasters trying to impress their rivals by conjuring the most powerful collection of mythical creatures. The more powerful the creatures, the more prestige you gain in victory points, and there can only be one master of the ember. So basically your cards come together. So you've got things like the raven, you've got the dragonfly, you've got the wraith, and if you match two cards or three cards or is depending as in sets, that helps you kind of gain those kind of those kind of victory points. Mm-hmm. Um it looks kind of interesting because it looks like one of these games which is very, very simple to look at, very, very yeah. simple to, to kind of pick up. But it's they're very, very much touting themselves as a kind of a gateway game. And uh, they say on it, listen, you can learn how to play Ember in three minutes, but finding your favourite strategy might take a, a little while a, a little while longer. Might take a lifetime. It might take a lifetime, if not longer. You get um in the expansion you get like there's twenty seven new creatures, there's six elemental gods, there's uh, seven Tudor cards as well. You can buy the original game, it's uh, the company's District thirty one. Mm-hmm. Um and if you go to District thirty one's website you can uh, find out more about the original Ember game. I the reason this caught my eye was because of the colours in it. It looks absolutely fantastic, and it looks like you can on the Kickstarter itself. You can also back it so that you can um, that you can get the original um, you can get the original game as well. It's currently sitting. It's got nineteen days to go. It is currently sitting at. Let me just see. It's over its target already. So it's sitting at... um, Its target was only 3,000, but it's sitting at (laughs) 4,122. So it has got 19 days to go and 196 backers. Wow. (laughs) So that's pretty good. Um, And one of the choices that it has on the... One of the choices it has on the campaign is the ability to pledge... So you can get the original game as well, which is kind of cool. So looking at your... Just have a quick look at the backing levels and scrolling down the phone while Colin beep, beep, beeps at us <laughs> like R2-D2. <laughs> well, that's actually awful. So let's just have a look at this and see what we do. If we do, yes, you can... I think the, the project itself is really rather kind of inexpensive. So you can get the Ashes expansion from uh, Tenor. But if you mm-hmm. want the magical core game, it's only fifteen pounds. If you want the core game and the expansion, it's twenty four. And you can also buy promos, so you can get basically you can pick up the game for in total the original plus the expansions for about thirty pounds. As I say, it's uh, it's not got that long. It's you know reasonable amount of time gone. 
um, 19 days to go. Uh, yeah, nice. Hit it, hit its 4,000. It's funded. It's definitely going to happen. Mm, yeah. And if you splash in, you know, 30 quid down on this, it could be yours as well. Miss, well, Colin, have you seen any other games clicking around? A, not on live Kickstarters. Uh, I joined um, the Cannibal Sector 1 Kickstarter, but it's just finished. So, ah, right, okay. Yeah, and that's by a wee Scottish company. So it's Who's like, that? Mm. That's, um, oh, uh, if you just give me two ticks. Yes, and meanwhile I shall have a quick chat about our second game that we want you to look at. It is, um, it's called Kill the King. And it's basically, it's a very, very simple strategic board game where the idea is that you are, it's two armies facing off against each other. And uh, and the idea is the attackers are attacking a castle, whereas the other army is defending itself. And the attackers must hurry because the defenders will soon be reinforced by their own cavalry who will hopefully return and save the day. It's basically... <laughs> it's basically um, two players. It lasts... You should say the game time's about half an hour. The, the idea is you almost... Like what you do is you... You put a visit... You put a screen between the two players. Mm-hmm. You set up your I pieces... Like a battleship. Well, kind of. You see, if you look at this, you've got attacking player units, so it's not using miniatures, it's using kind of tokens. Uh-huh. So you get different types of attack. You get catapults, you get spearmen, you get archers, cavalry. You yeah. also get a battering ram as well. And then you get the, 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 the defending player units. Uh-huh. So the idea is what you do is you set up your attacking and your defending units and you put a screen between them while you're setting up. And then what you do is you lift away the screen and then you see oh. where people are set up. Um, it is by, um, let's see, it is by a, a gentleman called uh, Peter Shanka Olson. Mm-hmm. Um, and the funding is in, the funding itself is in Krona, um, I believe. So oh, essentially. It's Norwegian. Norwegian. Yes. So you can get uh, the, you can buy the game, and it costs about twenty eight pounds, mm-hmm. and it's from you know it's Norwegian. Um, how is he doing the shipping? Is is he is he got a network? You know how there's like he's European his, network. Yeah, he's seen like his that, free yeah. shipping, so it looks like it's like a, um, it looks like it's a kind of a, he's got that kind of sorted out. I know he Check has been. Um, I know that he has been talking on the UK Kickstarter uh-huh. kind of Facebook group about it a lot, which is where which is where I saw him. Yeah. He's funded. Um, he's almost doubled his funding goal. His his um, goal was thirty thousand krona. Um, he's got one hundred and ninety eight backers, and he's got 16, 16 days to go. Excellent. Do you know what I liked it? I liked the simplicity of it. Because there's a lot. So how's it actually? Do, do, does it go into how it actually plays? You know, I, I know you said the hidden mechanic, but um... basically, you'll 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 have your leader, you'll have your units, and you'll move your units in order to be able to attack mm-hmm. attack the the defending party. So you get moves and you get attack. You get kind of like attacks as well. Yeah. Um, it's very simplistic looking. It's tiles as opposed to going down the lines of actually having miniatures. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that could be something that you could put some miniatures on top of it if you were oh, you so interested. Could but if you wanted to. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. As I say, that would make the sort of like blind well, positioning a wee bit more difficult. To yeah. Do, well, it kind of caught it caught my eye just because of the simplicity of it. No, no, I I, I like that wee idea of the the completely hidden. Mm. Deployment and everything, and you've got like it's it's got it's got a giga mode as well, which is basically what you do is you have you get two copies of the two game, two copies, yeah, and you put them you put them kind of uh, end on together, mm. so you make a really really big huge amazing castle. It's starting to hit stretch goals as well, oh, which is kind of kind of you know it's just kind of interesting. So again, it's doubled its funding. It's got about it's got sixteen days to go. Mm. It's called Kill the King. And it's by Peter Shanko Olsen. 
So uh, oh yeah, he does have a eurozone. Um, yeah, that, you know, that, that wee yeah. symbol means that wee he's symbol. got a, a like a, a distribution. Distri- yeah, he's yeah. got a distribution center. Yeah, which oh, is excellent. which will be quite good. So that is uh, that's quite interesting as well. Um, obviously, we will put the sh- in the show notes. We'll put the links mm. to both of these projects so you can take a look. As we always say with Kickstarter. What do we say? Always beware. Yes. You know, um, yes. Make sure it's, you know, because you're not buying a finished product. You're no. buying the chance that that company might make the finished product. Yes. So that means they might not make the finished product. Check, as I say, buyer beware. Check the websites. Check their social media. Mm. Check their Facebook page. Check if they're part of any kind of groups and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's an investment. If they're very distant, then you might want to be careful. Yes, as um, I say, just see we do not. Um, and as we put on our little, we've got our little um, transparency policy now that <laughs> you know that we put on. Um, that if we mention bit back uh, Kickstarters on the show, we're not saying go out and buy them. It's up to yourself to no, make that no, no. to make that yeah. end uh, to make that decision. Um, we've I've dropped in about Sherlock. In purgatory. Yes. So, yeah. shall we move on very quickly to some shout outs? Because Okey-dokey. what I've been saying on the interviews is I've not been doing the shout outs to people. Aww. And what we've discovered is that we kind of hit 1900 downloads today. Did we? Yes. Aww. And a lot of that has been to the fact there's been some fantastic people who have been kind of retweeting our stuff and I did do a little thank you on the episode that's just gone out just to thank everybody but today for some reason we kind of just we kind of have hit a little bit of a trek so it's time for me just to go back very quickly and say hello to a couple of people Um, just a thank you to a couple of the guests that have appeared kind of recently first of all um, Sam from Staying In Gary from Bonfireside Chat um, Paddy from Twin Humanities and Jeremy Greer from Who is the Worst but is also from Don't Give Up Skeleton <laughs> and is therefore one of the best. Um, just a couple of shows. Again, if you like us and you maybe want to look at something different, then give us a, you know, just give them a quick listen. Some of these are new that we've not talked about before. Some of them are, are old and old and lovely. Um, we have got... Um, some new well, let's some old guys that we love very, very much. Quest for Magic and Steel, which is the uh, basically this is Empire Steel running through their weekly kind of D and D session. You've got mm-hmm. David, you've got Amara, you've got Shia. You've um, it's just really, really good fun. It's only half an hour an episode, so you can blast through it, and it's they're just <laughs> the comedy is really, really good in it. Um, Dark Insight. Mr. Charles, Mr. Cliff, and Mr. Jeremy Greer again, because the boy gets about everywhere. <laughs> um, they're talking about games, video games, Dark Insight, excellent. Um, we're going to skip um, these people. <laughs> oh, no, we'll go back to them later on. Um, some new guys. We've got um, Paul, um, Paul, Brian, and Evan doing the Mega Ten Marathon, which is about the Shin Megami Tensai games. Um, mm, which yeah, I know them well. Yes, I don't. I no, don't I do. I don't. No, but it's 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 they're doing that, and they're also doing Persona games, which are quite famous ah. on the Vita. Um, it's interesting, <laughs> even if you're not into the games, because they do mm-hmm. cover a lot of stuff. Um, we've also got Auto Advanced Text, which is David and Robert, and mm-hmm. they are talking about the Ace Attorney games case by case. Ooh. It's fascinating. <laughs> It's really, really good fun. Um, Cinephiles and Cenobites, um, gentlemen by the name of Mox and Ono, and they talk about horror. They talk about horror genre. So Ooh. they pick a couple of films. They pick new ones. They pick old ones. It's it's good fun. It's a slightly different format, yeah. but it's they're kind of you know. They're I was going to play a horror game on my vibe, but uh, no. no, no, it's too real. The vibe, the vibe's <laughs> excellent. I mean, it would be far too real. Um, Polyhedron Collider. Do you know what they do? Board games. <gasps> Rivals. Well, I'm only giving them a shout out. <laughs> on their last episode, yeah, they asked for questions. 
and I submitted about seven of them on Twitter, Way. and they, <laughs> and they, and they kind of answered every one as well. Oh dear! So hat, hats off to them. That's um, that's Andy, Steve, and uh, John. So hats off mm-hmm. to you boys. Uh, um, yeah, they're they're decent. They're obviously they're not as good as us, but. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not funny. That's probably no. They're better than us. They've got a proper website and everything. Ooh, yeah, I know. Proper. They're like professionals and stuff. Um, the Monster Closet podcast, which is a new one that I've been listening to, Lee and Alan and Paco talk about games, which is all good. Um, and that's it. And that's it. That's it. That's I don't it. think there's anything else. But as usual, we put the shout out for questions. And as usual, we were and not. Twitter said no. Twitter didn't disappoint us. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. So we're going to questions. We might have some live ones. We're going to, we're going to Twitter. We're going to Twitter, and and here we go. We're going to start off with our with our lovely questions. <laughs> do you see? You didn't see this, but no. me and Colin are recording a new episode tonight. So do any of you lovely people have questions for us? Hashtag. <laughs> okay. Hashtag Colin God. is back. <laughs> and and uh, okay, so as usual, Nick Jones. Guess what he said? Maybe. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> he never says that. He did, and he said, "Did Colin miss us?" No. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he also asked, "When can I play Dead of Winter again?" Um. I don't know, Friday, if you've got your friends with you. Because uh, Nick's recently got himself a, a copy of Dead oh, of Winter. Oh, picked up one. Excellent. After listening to our John Gilmore episode. Hi, John. Well. Yeah, he says know, he listens. John listens. So, hi, John. A couple webcams. We, we could always set up a Yeah, we a could webcam do that as well. Game. That could be kind of cool. He's asking the question, did Rich miss Colin? Um, I still was seeing you kind of every week anyway. It was just the fact that we didn't get chances. Of course you were seeing me. Of course. I I couldn't help it. (laughs) I couldn't help. I could see a tree. I know they'll never (laughs) let me out of here now, Clarice. Um, We did see each other. We just didn't have a chance to sit down and play Dungeon Saga because of the, the previous Time Stories shenanigans that were going on. And then we were missing weeks and then I was away and then stuff. Yep. Pretty much stuff. And then I was getting drunk. You so. were, because it was <laughs> your birthday. We've heard that Nick goes on to us. This is Nick, Lane at 360. He's a fantastic guy. Mm. He is. Mm. We're going to get him on. Excellent. So he's he's going to be on. I'm going to have a special Nick show. A special Nick You're going to be on it as well. No, 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 no. no you're fine. <laughs> We've heard your stance on wizards and druids. What about mages? I don't think you mess with mages. Do you remember? You don't remember that time. Do you remember that time that there was that mage that used to go? Mages, they can be a bit hot-headed, can't they? They like to muck around with fire and stuff, don't they? That's pyromancers, mate. So what (laughs) what do mages do then? They're nothing. They're nothing. Are they rubbish? Oh, they're jumped up. All right, so we can, can we be, do we steal their lunch money then? Yeah, we do. Ooh, what about planeswalkers? I have no idea. I thought that was somebody that got strapped itself to a wing of a biplane and then floated about. Could you we, we do not mess with Jazz because he's some big planeswalker. All right, okay. Is that, so we leave planeswalkers No, it's alone? Jess, isn't it? No, yeah. No, oh, oh. What? Oh, it's what? that long sort of looked at magic cards so <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't we don't go to Ravenholm um planeswalkers I don't know I would be tempted if they're a bit shifty are they yeah do they hang about kind of Iceland try to steal the frozen chicken no in a Dungeons and Dragons sense if there was a cold bit where you store chicken in Dungeons and Dragons would a planeswalker come in and try and steal the aforesaid mentioned frozen chicken. I don't think they'd be in Dungeons and Dragons. Well, what would but... they be in then? Frostgrave. No. Well, what's a planeswalker then? Planeswalker is 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 someone that can walk through the planes, isn't it? Yeah. But... The different planes of existence. Oh it's, it's right. Like they're able to shift dimensions. Oh right. Okay. So they're weird <sighs> then. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to mess with them. You just Dear sounded God. like you remembered what that was about. <laughs> 
<laughs> Are you making up as you go along? Oh my goodness. <laughs> right, next question. Mass Movie Side UK. Now, Mass Movie Side UK continuously introduce us on their show. They do shout outs for us every single week, Aww. so we love them. Yes. But they also refer us to not being able to get, you know, living alone and only rolling D20s and not knowing the touch of a woman and stuff like that. So they can be quite cutting. I live in a basement, so they're not I know, too I far don't, I mean, I'm wearing, a pla- <laughs> I'm wearing a plaid shirt. I mean, I don't know what, you know. <laughs> For goodness sake, I don't know what his problem is. I'll, I'll read this because it's written in the, the most loveliest English. It's almost Shakespeare. If I were a mage... And you and the handsomer one, I don't know who he's talking about, were orcs, what combo of items would be best to get the ladies and defeat you? What items? Well, uh, definitely some Dapper Dan. I would, um, yes. I'd be thinking... Um, you po- need your hair product. Possibly. Um, I would think uh, maybe hairbrush plus two. Um, a hairbrush of plus two combing. I would nice. think so. I would also think poss- possibly a bath of plus seven bubbliness. Of reekiest minerals. Well, I, I think so. You know, something that would maybe, <laughs> you know, I'm not looking to, um, I'm just looking to smell good. Um, if you want to know the real secret, just lashings and lashings of money. <laughs> I, think so. I think if you were a mage and you had lots of money, lots and lots and lots you of money, you just pay off the orcs. It and seems to work fine. for most old men. <laughs> <laughs> just having lots and lots, lots of, of money. money. And as I say, mages are generally quite old and would probably have lots and lots of money. Um, Bored Graham's friend of the show. Hello, Graham. We do like Graham. He's saying Amiga 500 or Atari ST, and our answer is, do we look like we're Americans? It's obviously Amiga. Or an Amstrad, really. Yeah, Yeah. I know, Spectrum. ZX Spectrum. All the way. Old school. Exactly. 2020, isn't it? That's... that's They've just done a Kickstarter for uh, a really cool ZX. I really... No, I can't... Because I can't think that looking at Spectrum graphics is going to make my life any better. Because after looking at Spectrum graphics for a while, I'm just like... So, shrug. Hashtag shrug. So what? Alan but Partridge. It's, it's beautiful 8-bit. It's oh, not. It's nostalgic. It's not. I can live without it. I've got nice looking games. Manic, you've got, minor man. You've got virtual reality. I know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you really want to go back to 8-bit graphics? Because <laughs> yeah. you go after about all the collision detection rubbish on this. Um, he says, but seriously, folks, what are your favourite game mechanics? Oh, I had a movement for me. You you really enjoyed. Um, I really really enjoyed Whitechapel. In yeah. fact, Mister Jeremy Greer, who was on the show, has got a copy of Whitechapel. He told me mm-hmm. based on the fact that I enthused about it. Like no, it's, enthused, it's 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 so good. He should be in for lashings of fun. So I um, do like my favorite game mechanics are hidden movement. What about you, Colin? I like a bit of backstabbery. Blind betting, as we can see with my love of West, yes. but you know, in in a game like um, Shadow Over Camelot or or uh, Battlestar Galactica, that whole you know, like who is the traitor? Who is the one that keeps on putting in <laughs> the four points that just meant we lost? <laughs> it's glorious. <laughs> um. So that's Bor Graham's at Bor Graham's. Did I say? It? Well, ask. Well, Mass Movie Side UK, they'll be in the show notes anyway. They're at Mass Movie Side UK. We don't need to mention their Twitter handle. They don't deserve to get their Twitter handle, handle mentioned that much. Hashtag not all Twitter handles. No, exactly. <laughs> um, so thank you very much, Board Grahams. We have a new person that I don't know who they are. At Ewan Clark 92 Hello, Ewan. Thank you for asking a question. He says, any recommendations for single-player board games? I don't <sighs> actually own any single-player board games, um, but there was one that I was desperate to pick up for... Are you finding it? Yeah. I am going to jump in and say that a little while ago we... Ooh, okay. What's that called? Onirim. Yes, Um Oh. It's a little single person card game. Okay. It just takes about 15 minutes to play. 
but um, it's all about matching uh, numbers, which are like gateways. Um, all right, but cool. the card art is just absolutely Stunning. beautiful on it. It's it's a gorgeous wee game. Oh yeah, um, I'm getting shown this. Obviously, if you look at the <laughs> camera, you'll be able to see what we're talking about. So that's Oni Rim. Yes, we we'll need yeah. to remember that and write that down and stick and it in L show notes as well. You're trying um, to get rid of the nightmares from a city for the use of cards. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. That sounds a pretty good reason to be using cards. Sonsali is the other one that would spring to mind for mm, me because. Yes. Mr. Jeffrey Greer, Pascal Games, he is taking, he is doing, it's a solitaire card game mm-hmm. based around the adventures in World War II and overcoming obstacles using resources to take enemy bases. And it's... Yeah, it had that interesting way of having to you know, fight your way up the yeah, hill of, of the, the, the pyramid. pyramid of the cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's other ones you can look at. I think that um, there'll be a, there's a lot of games now that seem to be going towards having a single player element. One of the ones that always people talk about a lot is Mage Knight, um, which I always thought that was a, a, a dueling game. No, it's a one that you can you can um, Mage Knight. You can single player it as well. Yeah. It's got quite um, it's got quite complicated instructions. Here you go, Mage Knight, single player by the power of Google. And somebody's <laughs> actually asked on um, Board Game Gook, would this be worth the price of the single player alone? Oh, that's so blessed. And the answer is maybe. And let's see, the answer is maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's maybe worthwhile looking at. It's quite That's quite a lot of money to pay for a single, a single player, player game. Yeah. yeah. This, I like, oh my goodness. Here's a thing that's been... Oh, listen to this. Look, he says, title says it all. This is my first post on the site. So if there's a wrong spot to ask someone like this, please let me know. And the first response is yes. And the first response is, hello! (laughs) And then somebody is saying, yeah, it's kind of. But with Mage Knight, I have to admit, I really enjoyed the first two and a half solo plays I did. It's worthwhile, but it's also um, it's quite a it's quite a reasonably priced game. Whereas you, there's probably single player little card games you could pick up. Board game wise, can be difficult for single player because you really have to have some kind of proper. I've seen um, there was a whole load of games I was quite interested in. Um, mm. They're called the Coin series of games, and mm. they all have a single player variant mm. um, where. All the other faction, you know, they're, they're all faction based games. So one of them is built around Vietnam and it's mm. called Fire on Fire on the Lake. Right. Okay. After the book. Okay. Um, so one person's playing the Americans, one person's playing the, the um, Democratic Vietnamese, one's playing the Chinese supported Viet Cong, and the other one's playing the, the VC faction. Okay. Um, but there's like a, another version of it where it's um, Cuba. All right. The, I think it's called Cuba Liberté. I, I could be wrong on that. Uh, I'm just pulling it off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, it's, um, cool. it's cool. It's all good. There's another version of, of it where it's based on um, Iraq and Iran and all the dissident forces. Are they expensive? There. Yes, they are. Because they Mage expensive. Knight, I can see Mage Knight looks like it's going for about 54 quid. Hmm. So that's quite a lot of that's quite but a the, lot of money. They're quite interesting is they have like really in depth um mm. actions, you know, so you can run the other factions. Mm. So you get this big list of instru you know, a bit like a almost like a computer program of how the other factions will play yeah. when there isn't a human being playing them. That's pretty cool. And they're, they're quite inter- it's all called the car a uh, coin series of games. You should be able to find it if you look up coin series on board game geek or something like that. Well, I mean, check that out. As so I was says, going to get Fire yeah. in the Lake because right. I like Vietnam yeah. as a sort of historical dump. And I really wanted to get the Cuba game because I, I yeah. have a fascination with yeah, Cuba. Yeah, you like Cuba as well. So that's, I mean, that's where we would say. I know it's not much, but um, certainly worthwhile. Well, worthwhile taking a look at. Mm. It's obviously overcoming how much you're going to spend over how much time, you know, how much fun you're going to have on it. Um, last question from um, Andy Piddy, who is on Laps Gamer Radio. He's a regular guy on Laps Gamer Radio. He's at Andy Piddy. 
and it's actually Andrew Pedhajeki. Um, should I start stocking up on fantasy flight game workshop games? Yes. I would say yes, yeah. Um, I would say yes, but try not to get scalped from it because I've seen prices of like... I mean, what ga- the games that we're talking about, you're talking about games like Forbidden Stars. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. talking about, is it Warhammer Quest? Is that another one, I think? There was, there's the card game. Yeah, there's a card, the, the Conquest. Card Conquest, yeah. I think it's called. You've got Fury of Dracula. There's a fair number of... Um, is it owned by GW, Fury, is it? Fury is owned by GW. It's oh, a, yeah, Fury is oh. one of the ones on the list, which is why it seems to have rocketed up in price. Mm-hmm. If you've got them, then hang on to them with dear life. If you haven't got them, then be aware that there's a possibility prices are going to rocket through the roof for no other reason than people who are going to try and make some money on this, which is I'm a bit guessing the way GW is with old things, they just drop them and forget about them. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, Fantasy Flight was reprinting an awful lot of this back catalogue that... Yeah, that they just didn't yeah. have the, the... They didn't want... They didn't have the inclination to do it. Mm-hmm. It might turn around... It might change because they might turn around and decide that they're going to start reprinting the games. On yep. the other side of it, they might do... Um, they might start a Kickstarter job and decide that it's a good idea to go back and review these games mm-hmm. one at a time Maybe, and release yeah. the fourth edition because Fury was at its third edition. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, if you've got them, then love them and hold them. But do you know what? Other thing, make sure you flipping well play them because there's nothing yeah. worse than a game that sits on the shelf just because you think it's kind of worth some money. Well, I've got StarCraft 2 and it's sitting there... 180 quid. So yeah, you do, got... do, do I want to open this? No, it's Catacomb. <laughs> you know, we had Catacombs for a while, which was going for ridiculous amounts of money, and now they're doing the they're doing the reprint, which they're mm-hmm. calling Catacombs 3.5 now, I is believe. That a reprint, yeah. is it? Well, that's what they're calling it. Um, apparently, that's what it's going to be like. Are they tidying up the manual? I thought, so is that what it is? Maybe it is. Maybe they're making some slight changes to the to the presentation. I suppose at the end of the day, as I said, yes, I mean, get yourself a collection of them, but make sure you play them. You know, I think having a, there's nothing worse than having a sealed game that never gets aired. That's not what board games are for. You know, not really. They're supposed to be out there. They're supposed Mm. to be played. They're supposed to be liked and challenged and stuff, you know. What's the point? Well, they're meant to give you the entertainment that you... Exactly. Yeah. I guess I'm a bit fuzzy a bit. But then, you know, there's, there's people that buy a whiskey and then keep it for 50 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, never drank us. We're just kind of, we're just kind of quite, quite strange in, in my opinion. Arr. So, yes. <laughs> so, in other words, yes, if you can get them, get them. If you can't, then fair enough. But, you know, come and play games with us, Andy, because um, that would be cool. Um, I think that's, that'll do. You're not going to believe how long we've nattered on for this time. Is it a long time? It's a quite long time. But it's your it's your kind of, you know, back at you. Kind of, <laughs> it's your comeback tour. It's the Colin comes back kind of. We should have changed the title then. But, you know, I like we kind of like we agreed on the title before we started. Um, if you want to keep in contact with what we are doing, then there are several methods. If you want to find us on Facebook, you can go to facebook.com forward slash we're not wizards. If you'd like to look at some photos of us, you can go to instagram.com forward slash we're not wizards. Yes, we've got Instagram. Oh no, I didn't God. tell you about it. <laughs> um, we're on Twitter at we're not wizards. We, you can get us on our website, we're not wizards.com or .co.uk. Yes. You can also email us on magic. At we're not wizards dot com or dot co dot uk. I'm helping. You are, and we're also on Acast, which is another. Hey. Part. We're we're all over the place at the moment. We're on the iTunes as well. We are on the yeah. iTunes, which I don't have the <laughs> link for. Never have the link for, but I've got the link for somewhere, and just for the sheer joy of it. I am going to discover the linkage and I'm going to read it out again <laughs> because this is what we have to do when we have it. Because you might as well. 
you know what? If you do like what you're hearing tonight, go and give us a review. We seem to be getting a few. Oh, yeah, excellent. I know exactly. I don't. I just don't understand where where this love is coming from. You can get us on iTunes, which is iTunes.apple.com forward slash GB or US or you know whatever, wherever, whichever country you're in. Uh, iTunes.apple.com forward slash GB forward slash podcast forward slash weird dash not dash wizards forward slash ID. One zero eight four one nine eight four zero five. I'm sure it's got some sort of search thing. You don't have to type all that. Rubbish, I, I'm, I'm sure. pretty sure you can go to iTunes and just search for We Are Not Wizards. But if you do, drop us a like. Drop us. A <laughs> I hate doing that because I hear other people doing it, and I'm kind of like, no, well, it's, iTunes is rubbish. It doesn't. I know. It doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't tell know? me anything at all. It doesn't even tell Has you. Has anyone downloaded exists. this? We, no, we, we, don't, we don't care. <laughs> Would you like to buy a shiny new phone without a headphone jack? No. No. No, we wouldn't. No, we like our own choice of our stuff. Thank you very much. Um, remember, but remember. I have two hundred and fifty pound headphones. Or, or why? Why well, do I, I want your silly Bluetooth I ones? I've got a set of offers. Come on, get over it. Just remember, at the end of the day, people. I think that's it, isn't it? Mm. Yes, I think so. Yeah, it was a good run. It was. It was nice while it lasted. It was good fun. <laughs> just, re- just remember that we are many things, but we're not a pair of shoes. Don't do this. Don't <laughs> do this every single time. We are many things, but we're not wizards. We're not wizards. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. Say good, say goodbye, Colin. Goodbye, Colin. <laughs> and I've been Richard. <laughs> Some things never change, do they? For goodness sake. Um, do we do an end song? No. Do you know why? Because we've got music now. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we don't have to do an end song. We've got a lovely jazzy piano, 1980s piano thing. You nice. go away for a couple of weeks, I get that. And we've got 1980s funky guitar music as well <laughs> okay, at the okay. beginning. <laughs> it's good to have you back. 